today's drywall video, I'll be hanging 16 sheets, uh, kind of a half bedroom. They separated a room and a bunch of just little patches. They had electrical work um, that need run and just kind of just clean up work. Their basement was kind of unfinished a little bit and they're just trying to, I guess, Airbnb it. So they're just trying to get some income through their basement, uh, which is a great idea. Um, and uh, so this job, I think I'm going to finish it now. At the end of the time, it'll take me about 15 hours to do. And materials were 200 and the job again was 1545. That's 89 an hour, which is fantastic, right? How many of you can sit there and say you make 89 an hour? Probably none of you, right? Very few make that. And I make that full time. I make that kind of money 40 plus hours every single week and I have for a long, long, long time, okay? I do drywall for most of my income. There are many ideas that I've offered. You can take any idea and make it full-time income. You're working at a job right now and the, your sole purpose of that job is to make more money than you take, right? That's why they've hired you. So why can't you be your own boss or owner, which everybody says that, but the point is change your mindset how money works. Money is a made up concept. Money is just a game. Literally, if you want any amount of money in your hand, you literally can have it. It's just a simple concept. You just need to change a few things, change the rules, change the game just a little bit any amount of money you can have. It really is that simple and I can walk you through step for step how to do it. In my case, I do drywall and I make, in this case, 89 an hour, but generally 100 or 80 to 100 an hour, somewhere in there. And that is fantastic, beautiful money. Let's get right into this drywall video and uh, tell me what you think about it. I mean, I, I really do enjoy doing this kind of stuff and uh, we'll see you next video. When hanging residential drywall, it's easiest and best practice really to hang vertical like this. Uh, the framing has to be dead on to hang um, uprights. Uh, if you notice, I always start with the very top piece of drywall. I cut it down, so if you see that top piece, how it's really short. Um, so I rip it, so that way the bottom piece is exactly four feet tall, so my seam is easier to finish rather than if I were to put that four foot piece on top, um, then I would have to bend over when I tape and nobody likes to bend over. All the sheets for this job were the eight foot sheets. Um, the, it, everything was just out of reach. If I would have brought 10 footers down, um, I still would have needed butt joints everywhere. Um, and 12 foots, unfortunately, um, weren't going to fit down the stairs. So in a perfect world, you don't want butt joints. But I, I kind of was forced into having two butt joints on every single wall. But that, it happens. A lot of people I talk with, customers and things, they just get so intimidated about doing drywall. And if you've watched enough of my videos, um, or even just done drywall yourself, it's just, it goes very easy. I know this is a time lapse and sped up, but it's super easy once you learn a couple techniques. Um, I mean, drywall just goes together very quickly. This particular wall is a little challenging. The bottom left there, there's a ton of water lines. And that takes some real um, skill or just patience to do. A lot of measurements, a lot of transferring measurements. Uh, so that's not for a beginner type work. But all this other stuff, anybody could do. Um, in maybe another video, I'll show you how to do all those measurements. See all those measurements I'm doing? Um, and even sped up, there's probably 20 measurements there that I've done. So I've pre-cut every single hole so it's perfect and then it just slides right on. If you see that, every single hole was perfect. And here I'm cutting out the electrical boxes. I know I said it in the intro, but again, this job paid $1,545 with just under $200 in material. So this job took me 15 hours which paid $89 an hour. And just rewatch this video over and over again. I mean, it's so easy to do this stuff. 
Here, I chose to do it two tiny little pieces because I just didn't have that big of a piece left. Um, but yeah, I mean, just don't be afraid of this stuff. Just get in there and start drywalling. They took out these old 80s style lights, and that's what these four patches are. Uh, but these four patches, uh, for a beginner, if a beginner came into this, just these were beautiful learning patches. Uh, so if you find anything in your house like that, um, I mean, they, th that type of work is beautiful to, to learn on. These tiny circles I'm working on, do you see how I cut it larger? I do that so I can add backing, wood backing to it, so uh, there's a more strength to the patch. And that's the reason I just made it bigger. Just taking some trim off so we can repair that wall there. I swear it's been like 10 different jobs and, uh, since I'd done square bead before. So thank goodness. I mean, there was only, I think, two and a half beads here, but uh, we're real happy that they did square. I think square's in style, and it's just so much easier to do. I really like the square look. We move right into wet work here. Here we are pre-filling. Pre-filling is vital for crack prevention. It takes the any gaps, any gaps you have, you just kind of glob some mud in there and you wipe it really tight. That makes that there's no air gaps. It, let's say, just say you were to tape over those big gaps. There's going to be an air gap behind that tape, and over time it's going to crack. So pre-fill uh, solves that problem. Uh, we're also hitting the bead here for its first coat, first of three. Out of all the wet steps, pre-fill probably should take you the longest next to tape. That's how much time you need to invest in the pre-fill. Um, again, because it's just hugely important for crack prevention. Moving right into tape, all repairs, it's best practice to use mesh tape on all damaged repair um, areas. Here's brand new hang, so I'm using paper tape. If you notice, it goes pretty quick, but I taped this by hand. I didn't use my banjo. I forgot um, it at home, so I just did the flat um, taping by hand. The, I did the inside corners with my banjo, um, but again, it's a real small job. It really didn't matter. All right, here is my banjo. Th see that thing I'm holding? in my hand. It basically what is so cool about it is as you pull tape out of it, it puts a layer of mud on the back side of it. So it just makes things so much quicker, cleaner, and faster. They do sell something, its nickname is a bazooka, an automatic taper, uh, which is the next step up, but it's like $1,200 for that tool, and I just rarely do very large jobs that I would need that. So I'll probably never buy a bazooka and just stick with my banjo. Also, if you've watched my other videos, during flat uh, work here, I use my flat box mudder. This job was just so small, I just mudded it by hand for the first finishing coat because uh, those tools just take forever to clean and it was a little annoying. So when you see when I cover that tape up, um, uh, the flat joints, you'll see that I do it by hand instead of my flat box. Starting in on the second coat uh, for the flats, I'll end up doing a third. And I do the third kind of mixed into the texture as well. Um, so it might go a little quick, but I do do a third coat on the walls. The ceiling patches, I believe I even did a fourth coat. Patches really need a ton of extra attention because you're trying to get it flat before texture.
I got confirmation from the customer this is just what they wanted to do, but half the walls are in orange peel, and they wanted to do the holy smooth on these walls. So if you notice, um, they're just a little different. Maybe holy smooth is one of my favorite textures, um, mainly because it just hides everything. You can do drywall very so much quicker with this holy smooth texture, and have the walls come out fantastic. Um, and again, if you just see me kind of do it, I glob mud on the knife and I just kind of wipe it real quick and it gives this skippy look. And um, it's pretty cool to do. If you just kind of rewatch the same section real quick over and over and over, you'll really learn how to do it. I mean, there's really not a whole lot to it. So I'm starting to sand out for the Holy Smooth. My power sander doesn't get the corners very well, so I hand sand all the corners, ceiling and wall, and I generally do the bead hand sand as well, and then I'll take my power sander to it, and it makes short work of any mess ups. Here this uh, trim, again, I want to do that by hand. That power sander would just eat through it um, and cause a mess. Starting my ceiling texture now, matching ceiling texture or matching any texture is extremely difficult and just takes a ton of practice to do. Um, and I've made other videos showing this, um, but it's just a lot of fun and takes a lot of talent uh, to match texture. I slowed this little clip down uh, so maybe you could see it better. Spraying orange peel is just very hard to get on camera, the actual look of it. Uh, but anyway, this is just spraying the orange peel, getting it matched. It goes very quickly. All right, that completes today's drywall video. Again, this job was about $1,600. Took me 15 hours to do. Honestly, that's pretty cool, right? You could do this too. It's very easy. There's not a whole lot to it. Today's Friday. I'm going to be doing a framing video on Monday. I haven't done a framing video yet. Just a couple walls. I'll see you guys Monday.